Is your government willing to make cuts to any stream of immigration uh, to soften demand for housing? I think one of the most important things that we need to understand is that immigration is a source of opportunity, of growth, of economic advantage for Canada. Uh, but it's also important to make sure that, as we always have, we're doing it responsibly and at a pace uh, that our cities, our municipalities, even our uh, rural regions can absorb. Hey folks, my name is Mo Amir and this is Van Color, British Columbia's bonafide culture and politics TV talk show. Tonight, we're dedicating the entire show to immigration. And of course, in signature Van Color fashion, we're gonna explore the issue from a few unique angles. First, let's look at immigration from a municipal lens. Of course, the federal government sets immigration targets, but ultimately it's provinces and municipalities that are responsible for ensuring adequate housing, healthcare, schools, public transportation, and other infrastructure that is required to accommodate a growing population. One BC mayor made waves over Christmas after he called Canada's national immigration plan irresponsible. Oof. He's here to explain the most popular mayor in Metro Vancouver, not named Linda Buchanan. He is the mayor of Port Coquitlam, Brad West. Mayor West, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mo. And I would be remiss if I didn't start off. I know this is important to you by wishing you a happy new year. Happy new year, Brad. You know, it's not February yet, so we're still able to wish each other. So I appreciate I that. I may go Thank deep so much. into February, actually. Oh, I'm good for you. Good for you. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> let's, just, let's just get to the, let's cut to the chase here. In the city of Port Coquitlam, mm -hmm. are immigrants no longer welcome? No, they are welcome. Uh, they're a hugely important part of our community. Okay, because you made it sound like Port Coquitlam is full. No, Port Coquitlam is not full, but this is really about what is an appropriate level of immigration. I think immigration is important to a country for a number of reasons, which we can explore. But what is also important is that there is some control in place on the number of immigration, uh, number of immigrants that come to a country. Um, and it has been the case in our country for, um, for decades, generations, that we've had a, a certain uh, volume of immigration. What we have seen in recent years is that number has become supercharged. And it would be interesting to explore some of the reasons why that's happened, uh, because some of the biggest cheerleaders for that come from corporate Canada. Uh, and they obviously have an interest in a very high level of immigration, particularly in one of the streams that uh, often uh, is not discussed, but needs to be at the forefront, which is uh, the temporary foreign worker program. Yeah, absolutely. That's a garbage program. Right, We're right, actually right, going to be talking about that later yeah. in the show. Yeah. Um, but if you, for instance, take the last 12 months, Canada's population has grown largely from immigration in the last 12 months by 1.25 million people. That is a record the amount. largest yeah. number uh, on record. And, and not only the largest number, it surpasses the normal rate of population growth by a significant amount. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, people have needs. You can't just say, okay, here's 1.25 million people and walk away from it. Sure. People need a place to live. Yeah. People need ways to get around. People need health care. People need education. Families need child care. There are so many different needs that come with a growing population. And what we haven't seen is the corresponding increase in investment mm -hmm. in those services. In fact, I would argue that most of them are at the breaking point. You have- I mean, they're probably broken if we're or, being honest. Or, or past it. Yeah. You know, we have schools where you can't get kids in a classroom, they're in portables. Mm -hmm. Look at what is happening in Surrey in terms of the number of kids that are in portables. You have how many British Columbians who don't have a family physician, mm -hmm. can't get a family doctor. You have childcare wait lists that are just insane. You're told, you know, oh, you should have been uh, on our, our wait list, you know, when you even had the thought that you may have a child at some point. Sure. You have all of those pressures. At the same time, you are looking at a supercharged rate of immigration, 1.25 million people in the last 
12 months. And I can, I, I can understand that you're seeing this in your community of Port Coquitlam. I fully understand that. I guess where I get a little troubled is you're framing this really based around the immigration issue. I mean, why aren't you, I know that, uh, you know, the Solicitor General, Mike Farnworth, was a mentor to you, but why aren't you criticizing the BC NDP for not increasing healthcare capacity? We have people, as you just noticed, as you just sort of alluded to, we have people dying on cancer care wait lists. Why aren't you criticizing them about the over 2,000 portables that we have in our school systems throughout the province? Why aren't you criticizing the federal government for the amount of corporate welfare it doles out to seemingly all these big companies that they're in bed with? Why aren't you criticizing the federal government for billions of dollars that it's shipping overseas to no benefit to the average Canadian? Like those things I feel like are more important than this idea of like, oh, it's it's all these immigrants that, that have caused the healthcare to break or, or no, schooling and, and to break. That's not what I've, I've said at all. And in fact, what I just did was criticize the government <laughs> on all of those things that you articulate, I said the portable issue, the healthcare issue. And of course, they bear responsibility for that. But I'm also saying that not as a result of an individual person, individual immigrants uh, uh, responsibility, but the system that has been designed by the government is putting so much pressure on all of those uh, social uh, service infrastructure pieces and physical infrastructure as well. The, the whole way Canada's immigration system is set up, in my opinion, uh, does a, a huge disservice to the immigrant themselves. Mm -hmm, I would agree. Yeah. It does a, a, a great deal of disservice as well to the people that are living here. It is really, I think, largely a form of corporate welfare. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why, as I said at the beginning, the biggest cheerleaders for increasing the rate more and more and more comes from the biggest corporations and the top CEOs in this country. Yeah, They view it often, I think, as a source of cheap labor. You look as well at our uh, post-secondary institutions. They have become addicted to international students. Well, and then we they, have schools that are basically just degree mills, right? It, like they're it, not it, even providing a good education or at least what they advertise to these students that are coming from abroad. Exactly right. So I don't think, I don't believe for a minute that being critical of, of those systems and saying that there should be a reasonable limit on the number of people who we are bringing into our country through the various streams, be it temporary foreign workers, international students, or immigration, uh, is in any way trying to lay blame at the feet of those individuals, they're victims. Sure. They themselves are being victimized by the system that has been set up. Yeah. And I, and I appreciate that. Again, I just feel like it needs to be counterbalanced with the issues of, around capacity. And I think it isn't just one government. I think for decades we've been failed by successive provincial governments and federal governments in terms of creating these capacities and un under under the full knowledge that the population is growing through immigration and that we need immigrants. I mean, you talked you talked about family doctors. My family doctor is from South Africa. He's an immigrant. He recently brought in another family doctor from the UK. Uh, I just don't want to see a system where we stop bringing in these people that we need to contribute to the fabric and, and the building of our country. No, and that's certainly not my argument. Um, there might be others who are making that argument. I think they'd be <laughs> wrong. Um, but I also think there needs to be a reasonable limit. I think it is entirely within reason that a country would say that there is going to be a, a certain cap. Mm -hmm. Because again, everyone has needs. You can't bring people in and just walk away and think that things will materialize by themselves. Yeah. Like the idea that, well, we need to build more homes. I agree. It's very easy to say we need to build more homes. You don't wave a magic wand and have them materialize all overnight. But the way our immigration system and the various streams that we've talked about are, are set up are completely ignorant to that. I would fact. agree. There's it, absolutely no it, in, holistic plan. They, yeah. it, if, I mean, when you have the BMO <laughs> saying, an economist from the BMO saying that this immigration plan it has no viability in reality whatsoever, I mean, when, you, <laughs> when corporate Canada is saying that, you know that the pendulum is probably swung. Absolutely. Brad, I got to cut you off there. 
thank you for this chat. You and I are friends. We're pals. So I appreciate that we could uh, discuss this somewhat sensitive issue. But again, always appreciate your time. Thanks you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Folks, that's the mayor of Port Coquitlam. Never shy to speak his mind. He is Mayor Brad West. Now, after some business, we're going to continue the conversation, but with a focus on Canada's labor shortage. Is our current immigration strategy filling the gaps of our labor market? Let's talk about it up next. <laughs>